Hi guys, Robin from Rainbow Gardens and today we are going to talk about milkweed. Now is the time to plant that milkweed. We have nice weather and we have it in stock and we are getting lots and lots of, uh, of milkweed in stock because the butterflies are migrating through right now. The monarchs are heading uh, north and we've actually seen quite a bit of activity. We have a few caterpillars here but now is the time they're going to be, uh, you know, the next uh, few months they're going to be migrating through. So you're going to want to plant that milkweed now if you're wanting to see butterflies uh, in your yard and uh, caterpillars. Um, there are several different kinds of milkweeds, more than several, lots. Um, native to Texas, there are um, several different kinds and unfortunately you don't find those a lot in uh, commercial plant nurseries because they are harder to grow. They take a little bit longer to germinate. Sometimes you have to, they need to overwinter in the ground, all these different things. Um, and then they're just very sensitive to water and sun and things like that. Um, so we do encourage you to try to grow some by seed. We do sell very limited quantities. We have one person that grows it for us. Um, so we do have some, this is a Zodis milkweed right here absolutely gorgeous. This is one of our natives. But as you can see, this is what a native will produce and this is what the tropical milkweed will produce. So we always recommend that everybody get both. That way, you know, if you're very into the natives, you've got your natives, then you also have food for your caterpillars because your caterpillars are going to need that food. And uh, this honestly will not last very long unless you have like a huge huge amount of it and if you do let me know where you are because I want some <laughs> so um, one reason some people um, do not care for tropical is because it doesn't usually die back in the winter um, and with that being said if it has a lot of traffic there can be something called OE spores on there and OE is basically a disease that butterflies can get um, it can cause um, harm or death, illness, um, and sometimes it can be so severe it will kill them. But it does spread very easily. And so the concern with the tropical milkweed is that since it doesn't die back, it doesn't die back like our natives, um, that it'll just hold on to that uh, spore. So um, the way to fix that is cut it down twice a year. It is very hardy. It's going to come back and most of the time more beautiful um, than ever. So usually in June, I'll cut mine down, just right down to the ground. And then um, I'll do that again in November when the monarchs are migrating back to Mexico. Now, um, the reason we want to do that is because for instance, last winter, it was pretty warm there for a while in December, I had butterflies everywhere and they are hanging around for the food. So we need to mimic nature and when these start dying back, we need to cut this back in the fall when, when that happens because we don't want to keep the butterflies here because they see the food, they think they should be here and then they'll freeze in the winter. The best place for them to be is in Mexico migrating. So we want to make sure that we are mimicking nature and we are chopping these down at the appropriate time. One problem I ran into is I had caterpillars still on my milkweed. Like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And I just kept letting it go and it, I just kept getting more and more eggs and more and more eggs. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, so what I ended up doing was I cut them all down and then I put a piece of saran wrap over the top, made holes and stuck the um, stems inside the holes. So that way they could finish eating, finish out their, their um, life cycle. And then I had my plants cut down so nobody else could lay eggs on my plants. So I had to, I had to look a little bit, but I, I was able to find one plant with uh, some aphids. Um, and aphids are little um, bugs, yellow bugs, that like to suck uh, the milkweed sap out of the plant. Now it can make your plant weak, uh, but it usually rebounds. And they kind of come in cycles. Um, and you usually, you know, you'll, you'll see a bunch all of a sudden, you know, one or two, and then it'll turn into a bunch because they're asexual. They just keep reproducing and reproducing. Um, and then the ladybugs and the lacewings will come in and their larvae and they'll eat all of those aphids up. 
So um, I have had people come in and say, you know, my plant, there's aphids everywhere, it's ruined. Uh, what can I do for it? Uh, I know that some people say, you know, as a last reserve, last resort, you can use neem or horticultural oil. But I have recently read some studies that were saying that they have a growth inhibitor in them. And even though you've used it, you've washed it off, um, you know, it's been a week or whatever, and your caterpillars eat that, that it could actually cause them to, they appear fine, but when they go to get into their chrysalis, it just totally stunts that, and they can only partially um, form their chrysalis, and then they die. And that's just really sad, and of course, that's not what we want. So we want to avoid chemicals at all costs, chemical pesticides and herbicides. Um, and fertilizers, you know, we definitely recommend, you know, organics um, when you're dealing with, um, uh, insects that you're trying to keep. We sell ladybugs and lace wings here at the store. We also sell praying mantis, but if you are a pollinator gardener, you may not want to get the praying mantis because they also prey on caterpillars and butterflies. Um, they kill a bunch of bad bugs too, but I usually don't purchase those. If they're in my yard, I'll just kind of leave them be. Um, but I do go out and purchase ladybugs and lace wings from time to time when it seems like I have a huge outbreak of aphids. Um, because they will, they, they will clean them up. It may take a week or so. You have to let them go in the evenings after the sun's gone down. Um, but uh, they will clean those plants up, um, the uh, ladybugs and their larvae. Their larvae actually eat a little bit more than they do, and they look a little scary. It doesn't even actually look like a ladybug, some of the larvae, but um, it, they, they are just chomping machines. Um, and then as far as the lace wings go, they are excellent. They, uh, their eggs can overwinter. You might find them sometimes, um, they uh, lay eggs and they have like little, um, it's almost like little hairs coming down and then the legs are, the, the eggs are at the end. Uh, we'll try to get a picture of that for you too, but lace wings are fabulous and their larvae eat a lot, a lot of um, aphids as well. Um, and then they also help with spider mites. So um, we definitely recommend that um, you use natural, natural methods. Um, now again, just because it says organic does not mean that it's necessarily safe. It's diatomaceous earth. Um, that is a very, it, it's ground up very fine like a powder, but what you don't see with the naked eye is that it's got sharp, sharp little like fiberglass, it's round, it's ground up like fiberglass. So the way that that works is as soon as the, you know, caterpillar goes and crawls over it, it cuts it open. Well, obviously as pollinator gardeners, if we're trying to raise caterpillars, we need to know that. Um, and you think, oh, this is natural. I'm going to use it, but you don't know how, um, it, how it affects the caterpillar. So not everything that says organic or natural can be used. Just wanted to make sure that everyone realizes that. You're, when you plant your milkweed, you're also going to want to have some nectar plants. Uh, and those are the, the plants with blooms that attract the adult butterflies. And you want to bring them in. Then when they see their host plant, they lay their eggs. And that is how you get butterflies and caterpillars in your yard. So you're going to want some uh, things, some of the uh, nectar plants that we recommend. Uh, Phanix phlox is absolutely gorgeous. Turk's cap. Um, Fragrant mist flower, shrimp plant, Lindheimer's senna. Uh, salvias are great. Uh, lantanas are fabulous. Verbena is great. The duranta is great. Um, there's just lots of lots of options. So please come see us if you need some help. We're happy to help you.